looking at the water here, I can see a, there's a little caddis merger right there. I can see a lot of caddis starting to come off. And caddis are one of the most effective of all aquatic insects on all trout streams, including spring creeks. Caddis flies are really essential to have a selection of those with, with you. And I find that the mergers probably work more than all the rest of the caddis patterns put together. And I have a little uh, caddis merger that I use that I tie out a partridge hackle and uh, some Anton dubbing that really works well for me. So I want to show you how to tie that. basically uh, three colors that seem to work for me the best. And I, I tie one that uh, has kind of an olive body, another one that is more of a tan or amber, and then another with gray. So I tie these in about three colors. And we're going to use the thread to match the body. We're going to do an olive one here, which is the color that I most frequently use. And I'm going to start out just tying the thread, and then we're going to put a little bit of this wire on here for ribbing. And you can use gold or copper strand on here, and we're going to use this for ribbing. This will add to the appearance of the fly, but it also provides just a little bit more weight onto the hook. And that's important because we want the body of this actually to break the surface film so that it floats right in the film. We're going to start out and tie the body on here with some dubbing. And this is an Antron dubbing blend. And it works very well because it gives a little bit of sparkle to the body of this fly. And we're going to dub this on very thin so that we can control how much dubbing that we lay on and make a nice tapered body. Also, I'm using a light dubbing and a dark thread, which will help with the translucency of the fly, allowing the thread to show through. And we just wrap this forward about two-thirds of the way down the shank of the hook. And the next thing we're going to do is put on a little bit of Antron yarn. Now this is how Antron yarn comes, just in a, a four-ply yarn. We only need about one ply of this, so I cut a little, about a one-inch section. And then I'm going to lay this right over so that it extends back about the length of the hook shank past the bend of the hook, and that will be a shuck. And also, we're going to use the top part of this as an underwing. So we've tied that right in the middle. And then I'm going to fold the underwing portion of it back so that we've got actually two plies facing back. And I have a little comb here, a little fly tying comb. And I'm going to just comb through this and kind of break this up because I want it to be really loose and rough. Now I've also used Zelon for this before, but the Zelon is a little too stiff. Now holding the underwing out of the way, the ribbing's going to come into play. And what I'm going to do now is rib over the ply that's facing back to form the shuck, just ribbing this wire forward. So now we've got a, a ply coming out for the underwing and one back for the shuck. And we want to cut the shuck to length, and usually I just kind of taper that cut like that. 
and and make sure the underwing is no longer than the bend of the hook so it comes right back about where the shuck starts and that's nice and uh, lots of sparkle in this fly and the next thing is to put on the overwing and I'm going to use some partridge feathers now you can use grouse uh, any of these wild birds really make great uh, feathers for the wings I stay away from the hen feathers of domestic chickens sometimes you can buy these hen saddles they're called and they look some of them really look good but the problem with them is once they get wet all the fibers of the feather will just kind of clump together and they're really not going to hold their shape where these partridge feathers really hold their shape well just lay one feather over the other so they're, the curvature is the same way and we're going to tie this wing short this is only going to be uh, the wings only going to go right to the bend of the hook and no longer so I'm going to pull the some of this rough feather out of the way and then just clump this together so I got a nice clump of partridge holding in place now I'm going to hold it right on the top of the hook and with a down wing doesn't matter whether you're using feathers or hair or any other material one of the challenges is to keep the wing from rolling over the the hook shank and, and the way to prevent that is to lift the thread straight up just kind of pinch it with your finger and thumb and you're also pinching the wing and then allow the bobbin to go right on over the top and then pull straight down that way the only tension you're putting is straight opposite of the wing and about four of those and that wing will stay right in place so now we've got our our little wing on there and then we're going to clip the excess that's not much of a wing but it's really all we're going to really need for this fly and the last thing is we're going to try to finish the head and make it look a little more buggy looking right now uh, it looks pretty sparse and you could add some more dubbing if you wanted I'll, if you do that I would use a darker color dubbing but I I like to use peacock it's uh, one of my favorite fly tie materials and I'm only going to need a couple of strands of it just pull a couple of fibers off this side stick or you could also use the the strung hurl which comes like this if you want tie it in by the tips of the hurl rather than just wrap this peacock hurl around like this which would look good I want to reinforce it by winding the thread through it so I'll use my dubbing loop method by forming a loop just shorter than the hurl anchor the loop and then I'm going to use the cowbird dubbing twister I'm holding the loop around my finger and then I'll just come inside the loop over the hurl and catch the other side and then I can just roll that until I get a nice reinforced uh, strip of hurl and then make two turns is all I really need and that forms the head and it makes a much more realistic buggy looking little uh, emerger with that hurl on there and then I'll tie off the head and we're through very simple little fly to tie but one that's extremely effective The caddis emerger is really a bear to see and where it's legal I frequently use two flies and I will use this as a dropper and use a more uh, visible fly about a foot above it when I do that most of the time 
the trout are, are going to take this merger because it's going to be right in the film. If it's sitting up too high, then it, it's really not going to be uh, very effective. So you need some of those if you encounter some of the great caddis hatches that I frequently see on some of the spring creeks and especially the tailwater streams that I fish.